So a lot of people wanted me to review this show more than anything on my other channel, Anime America. Now I usually love taking suggestions, but here's the thing. Anime America reviews Japanese animation exclusively. Whether you believe this show is an anime or not is just your perspective alone. But it's a huge argument that I want in my anime channel to avoid at all costs. Now how can I review this show if I can't do it on my anime channel? Hmm. If only I had another channel I could review it on. That'll do. So here we go. Pop Spectrum will review Ruby. There's a point where it tips, there's a point where it breaks, there's a point where it bends, and a point we just can't take anymore. From the creators of Red vs. Blue and working with brilliant animation choreographer Monty Um, this is Ruby, an online American series with Japanese anime art style. Hence why fans argue if it's anime or not. Okay, I get a lot of you think it's anime for the art style, but I also get how people think anime can only come from Japan. Then again, anime is just a Japanese term for animation, so by that meaning, anything could be an anime as long as it's animated. Did I just say Mickey Mouse could be anime? Well, he was in manga. And believe me, this is the same kind of debate that's been following Avatar and Code Lyoko. It's just a never-ending argument over what's anime and what's not anime. So I ask you guys, do you think Ruby is an anime? Leave a comment down below. When it came to advertising this show, we got a glimpse of four silhouetted girls with themed colors. Red, white, black, and yellow. One by one, the girls will be introduced to us not only revealing what they look like, but what they can do. Right away, we were all really impressed. With Monty's magic, the music, and the story their actions presented to us, we were all impressed. Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang. We love what we saw from each of them, and we wanted to know their story. Now what is the story? Well... So this is incredibly difficult to do. Ruby was Monty's project. This is his baby. When Rooster Teeth came to him with an idea, this was his image and dream. To have this artistic color theme featuring these incredible girls doing incredible things. So I want to be as respectful as possible when tackling this since Monty's death really affected not only the industry but to everyone who loved him, even me. But at the same time, I have to be fair and critique the show by the story and presentation. But with that said, what is the story? After stopping a robbery in action, a young girl named Ruby Rose gets accepted to a prestigious academy, Beacon, two years earlier compared to other students. Along with Wai Shni, Blake Belladonna, and her sister Ying Xiaolong, they study and train hard to become huntresses, warriors with exceptional fighting skills who fight to maintain peace against dark malevolent forces. So this is your basic story of students training at a school to fight monsters and those who oppose peace, while a secret organization plots to attack the government and military as the world may face a new war. So yeah, as much as I hate to say this because I highly respect Monty Um and his vision, I found the story to be very, very weak. Oh, okay, okay, don't turn away now because I have a lot of great things to say about this show. But just let me get over the negative stuff first, okay? I'm just gonna quickly go over the negative stuff, and then we'll get to the positive, so just keep watching. I got some awesome things to say about the show. The story is a basic generic story I've heard multiple times. It's as if the writers took the very first idea they come up with after they graduated from How to Make an Anime 101. These kids have a dream and need to go to a specific school in order to learn and train while fighting the forces of evil. That's like half of the anime we get today. You want to become the greatest chef in the world? There's a school for that. Do you want to become a superhero? There's a school for that. Do you want to become a very powerful wizard while fighting the forces of evil? There's a school for that, Harry. You're a wizard. You've got a dream, kid? There's more than likely a school for that. That means these types of stories are highly formulated, thus making them predictable. Main heroine goes to a school to prove herself while facing numerous challenges and making friends with people who will be there for her no matter what. 
How many times am I gonna see this predictable plot? Also, is this really a good versus evil, light versus the darkness kind of a story? Nature's wrath in hand, man lit their way through the darkness. But even the most brilliant lights eventually flicker and die. And when they are gone, darkness will return. Ah, uh, jeez, I already get enough of this in Kingdom Hearts. I hate these kind of stories for so many reasons but mainly because of how impressionable it can be to a naive audience. Marketing has shown that the easiest story you can ever make that'll cash in and be understandable to any audience is the typical good versus evil trope. It's easy for anyone to write these kind of stories as well as easy to take in and understand, but at the same time, today's audience is taking this as an impressionable representation as to what the world is supposed to be like. Take Nostalgia Critics Review of the Lorax, you know, the amazing story of reflection that was butchered to fit the good versus evil status quo that many of the classic stories fall victim to. That, that bad movie that was nothing like the book. Re read books, kids. Daddy, could that be me? No, kiddo. He's evil. You're good. Oh, okay. Man, I'm glad I'm not as evil as that guy. Yeah. Just like a delicate seed can grow a great oak, so can a faulty message grow a big problem. And that's how I feel about how this generation is behaving right now. They are the good guys, and anyone who opposes them or have a different opinion is obviously a bad guy. That the world doesn't exist on negotiations, debates, or understanding. Good versus evil. That's it. I'm the hero of this story, and if you do something that I don't approve of, you're obviously evil, and I have to take you down by any means necessary. Seriously, this is what's happening today. So is Ruby really taking this route? Why do you keep saying that? Huh? Stop calling him a rapscallion. Stop calling him a degenerate. He's a person. Well, it was going down that route until we get to Blake and her past with the rebel group White Fang. See, I told you this was gonna be positive. Blake Belladonna informs us that she came from a rebel group turned vigilante known as White Fang. Thinking that they were getting too violent for the cause, she runs away to become a huntress so she can protect the world from corruption and malevolent intentions. She gives us a gray area in this good versus evil trope, given the point of view that nothing is ever what it seems from the outside. Nothing is obviously clear. Nothing is ever black and white. The White Fang are fighting for equal treatment, but have somehow turned their peaceful protests into violent attacks to show they mean business. How far will they go though before their good intentions are ruined forever by their acts of terrorism? Are they really wanting to take this route or is someone manipulating them in order to use them as an army? This is where the story improved for me. The moment Blake's trailer was released, we get such intrigue and mystery. Who is she? What is she doing? Who is Adam and why does she have to leave him behind? Will she have to fight him in the future? So even though the story that is carrying Ruby is generic and bland, I am at least interested in the White Fang and Blake having to face her past to do what she feels is right. So yeah, we have a simple story that's been done to death, but I don't really see it as a major problem. The story is simple and easy to write up, but I think their intention was to go all out for their theme and Monty's choreography. Like with a lot of stage shows, for example, they make a simple story because the story is not the main focus of the play. But with Cirque du Soleil, Fantasmic, and heck, even the movie Fantasia, we're not there to get a good story. We're there to see what they want to clearly display. In this case, it's the animation, the theme, and the choreography. And when it comes to those elements alone, Ruby is pretty good. Ruby is art. It is beautiful. It is spectacular to watch just to examine the details and the fun action scenes. The first time I ever saw Monty Eames work was with his epic piece Dead Fantasy 2. I was drawn in with how creative it was, as well as entertaining and overall impressive to watch. This wasn't a sample work from a professional company, this was one man mastering his craft and showing us what he can do. So to see him unleash his creativity with this animation and art style, it's just a spectacle for any art enthusiast. I love animated movies. Hell, I love animation, period. I love watching these movies and cartoons to see what they can bring to the table that is not only good, but different. Sure, the animation gets a little shaky here or there, and uh, um, Cinder? Cinder, where's your mask? 
Ah, there it is. But at the same time, this is a big project. No one's ever tackled such a big project outside of a huge studio. Rooster Teeth has grown and improved their skills, but it's still a giant passion project for them. With that said, it is still amazing to watch what they can do to the characters, with whether they're fighting or just interacting with each other. This scene, for example. A puppy from a mail tube. Down rolling with it because it's funny. Now as for the characters, they're, they're pretty good. Some are bland, but some are really good. At first I wasn't liking Ruby with how overconfident and arrogant she could be, but at the same time she's young and will hopefully mature with every action she takes as well as learn from her mistakes. Plus, I like how geeky she can get. You're a huntress. I have your autograph! With Weiss, I wasn't expecting a snooty daughter of a high-profile family with what her trailer gave us. But I like her and what she can add to the story. As Blake has her backstory from the oppressed, Weiss shows her perspective from the side that works hard only to be hunted down and terrorized constantly because of her family's name and what they make. It added more to her character besides being a rich snob who doesn't want to deal with people beneath her. My grandfather's company has had a target painted across its back for as long as I can remember. And ever since I was a child, I've watched family friends disappear. I've talked enough about Blake, but I'll state again that I really like her story and I also like her as a character. One who wants to fight against the oppressors and do what's right, but needs to learn how to do it right without straining herself. I joined the Academy because I knew huntsmen and huntresses were regarded as the most noble warriors in the world. Always fighting for good. But I never really thought past that. As for Yang... She, she's cool, I guess. Well, I thought she was a bland, nice girl with funny catchphrases, but her backstory and her overall attitude when addressing life makes her a bit of a role model. The lesson she teaches Blake is a powerful one that everyone should learn. We're going to find the answers we're looking for, Blake. But if we destroy ourselves in the process, then what good are we? Everyone else is pretty good, but I, I think the villains are a bit overdone. Going back on my issue on good versus evil, the villains are playing the villain card way too much. Did I not specifically instruct you two to keep your hands clean while in Veil? <laughs> I just thought... Don't think. <laughs> Obey. We get it! You're evil! Is there more to you, though? Just evil? Okay, you're, you're just evil. Fine. Then again, I'm only going by the first two volumes, but I just want to call them Evil McEvil and Evil Rella because there's nothing more to them. They're just evil. Ha 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 ha, I'm obviously evil. Overall, do I recommend Ruby? Yeah, but, but just for the art and animation. It's beautiful to watch and the choreography is entertaining to watch every time. Story-wise, however, the White Fang and Blake's story were the only interesting things for me to pay attention to. The plot is old and predictable with generic villains rolling along with the trope. Although some of the characters are good and the girls are pretty good leads, the story is nothing special. So if people were to ask for my opinion, I'd say it's a good buy just for the art. Monty put his heart and soul into the show, and you can definitely see it with the colors, the animation, and the overall look to the show. And the, uh, the themes that they put to each of the characters, it's pretty cute. You know, it's Red Riding Hood, Snow White, Beauty and the Beast, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, it's, it's cute. That, that's it. There's creativity in everything you see in Ruby, just not the story. Pop Spectrum gives the first two volumes of Ruby three pops out of five. Although I wasn't too impressed with the story, the animation and art can still carry you through. But that said, the DVDs aren't really that expensive, so if you see Ruby Volumes 1 and 2 in the DVD store, go, go pick it up. It's, it's worth it, just for the art and animation. Do it for Monty. He put a lot of hard work into this, so it's, it's a good buy. This is Robin from Pop Spectrum. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, favorite, and comment on this video, as well as subscribe to Pop Spectrum. Thank you for watching!